Uh, this is uh, The Passion, John 14, part 5, uh, to stand for verse 5. Uh, Jesus has said he's going to go and prepare a place, a mansion. Then uh, he's, if he's going to do that, he's going to come back and receive those unto himself. And he says, you not only know where I'm going to go, but you know how I'm going to get there. Uh, this sermon series had no preparation, it's got no notes, uh, I didn't even know I was preaching this at this time of the day, it's 3.40am, I've done uh, four chapters in 40 minutes, uh, and uh, just turn the camera on and off, I do six and then I uh, put them all up, and so I've got 20 minutes before I finish before I spend the two or three hours getting it ready to go up to YouTube. So it'll be at about seven o'clock in the morning. Time to get up, I'd imagine, uh, and get on with my day. So, my number, uh, verse number five, when he says, you know where he's going, uh, people didn't really know where he's going, didn't really even know who he was. And then he says, you know, and you know the way, uh, and, and where I go you know, and the way you know. And uh, they definitely didn't know the way, right? Now, I explained that in uh, part four, and if you've just come into part five, I suggest you go to part one to four and uh, understand it first. And so Thomas says, doubting Thomas, the, uh, you know, <laughs> it's okay to be a doubter, right? I'm a bit of a doubter. Uh, doesn't mean I'm a less of a person. It's just when someone makes a statement that seems outrageous, um, someone like Thomas says, okay, that sounds outrageous, uh, tell us, go on, bring it on, tell us why I'm stupid and why that's an outrageous statement. Okay. Um, Jesus says, you know where I'm going, right? Sure. They uh, didn't even know he's the son of God, and he's not even convinced he's going to die, and uh, they're not even convinced he actually came down from heaven. So uh, when he says, and you know, and where I go, you know, uh, they don't really know. And uh, the way I'm going to go, you know that too. And Thomas picked up on that second half and said, um, no, I don't really know how you're going to go wherever you think you're going, okay? We haven't even established going to die yet. So um, anyway. So that's what leads him to say in verse 5. With a two minute introduction, I think we'll get to the verse now. Thomas said to him, Lord, we did not know where you were going, and how can we know the way? So there's Thomas. Jesus has said a statement uh, that just doesn't ring true with Thomas. There's uh, a garbage truck arriving at my house making all that noise picking up the garbage now normally I wouldn't be recording at 20 to 4 in the morning normally I'd be asleep and normally that garbage truck wouldn't wake me up and just take my garbage in the middle of the night uh, I don't know where you are the uh, garbage truck may come out long in the afternoon as you're having a beer or a cup of tea or a cup of coffee on your porch, uh, talking over your day's events, and you say, hello garbage truck driver, thank you for uh, picking up my garbage. Um, I, I put a lot of garbage out, garbage in, garbage out, and there's all my waste, and thanks for that. But uh, where I live, uh, we put the garbage out Wednesday night, or Tuesday night, and when we wake up Wednesday morning, uh, all the garbage bins are empty. Uh, we even have a truck that picks up all these plastic garbage bins. The guy doesn't even... Well, the one guy's out of the truck. He just wheels the bins into the thing and the arm picks them up. So they're out there doing that, making a lot of noise on the video. And um, it's nothing I can help and nothing I really care about. So, so Thomas said, we don't know where you're going and... Uh, we don't know how you're going to get there. Now, um, you think that's a strange statement about uh, what Thomas said, 
You think you're a whole lot wiser? Well, I tell you something. You don't know where you're going, and you don't know how you're going to get there. Uh, Fifty percent of Christians who live the normal Christian life don't even end up in heaven. That's a huge statement. Well, Jesus uh, said that statement that the five wise virgins, five foolish virgins, and five of the foolish virgins didn't have enough oil, and uh, so um, the wise virgins didn't give them any oil, extra oil. When God was taking too long, Jesus was taking too long to come back, so they didn't have any spare oil. That in the middle of the night. When it came to wake up, like three o'clock, God woke me up and said, uh, time to preach. They didn't have enough oil to turn the light on, so uh, if it had been the unwise virgins, I couldn't even preach this sermon, because I couldn't even turn my light on. <laughs> okay? So it's pretty hard to see the groom coming when it's pitch black. And, uh, the wise virgins, uh, they had the lamps burning, so when the... When the carriage turned up with the groom in it with uh, plenty of spots for people to jump in and go and meet the groom or the carriage pulled up saying we're taking everyone to the big party we're, we're going to get married to the Lord uh, jump in if you're ready or the wise virgins uh, say ah oh, sure and they all jump in but all the foolish virgins they don't even know the carriage is there, can't even see the way to jump in there. Now, <laughs> most of you guys have got no idea what makes up a foolish virgin. So, although uh, you think you know where you're going, and you think you know how you're going to get there, you're just like Doubting Thomas. You've got no idea if you're going to heaven and you've got no idea how you're getting there. I uh, hope my little uh, touching on the wise virgins and the foolish virgins has made you think about that. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you in this video what makes you a foolish virgin, but I can tell you what. <laughs> i tell you something, I know a lot of foolish virgins that uh, are Christians and feel the anointing of God and the presence of God every week at church and yet when they die they go to hell uh, can I say that? born again Christian can go to hell Jesus taught in seven of his parables that someone saved can go to hell but if you're not open to the fact that a saved person can go to hell and you think that's impossible well um then you're deceived and deluded and you've got no idea what Jesus' parables actually mean. So, I uh, hope you're worried there. hope you want to know how to be a wise virgin and not a foolish virgin. Essentially, James 4.4 4 says anyone who's a friend of the world is an enemy of God's. And so, if you're an enemy of God's, God's not going to take you to heaven. So, if you're into all the money and cars and houses and your whole life is consumed on what you own and you possess and all your resources and all your time and all your worry goes into nice iPods, nice dresses, nice cars, nice houses, all that sort of stuff. If that's essentially your life and you don't save anyone, as a Christian you don't really save anyone or lead anyone to God but all you do is live this uh, carnal Christian life there's a good chance you're a friend of the world and a foolish virgin and you're going to hell. Um, you'd have to uh, watch other videos of mine on what the foolish virgins are um, and they're not even available on YouTube. I've done those videos but you'd have to um, write me and say send me a DVD and that cost me ten dollars to send it to you and you'd have to be pretty keen. Um, I'd spend ten dollars to find that out but I doubt you'll write to me and care, okay? So we'll finish part five. Um, we've established you've got no idea where you're going and how you're going to get there. See you.